Hey everyone, welcome back to Wixfix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video is another episode of our little e-commerce mini series here for the channel. Today's video, we're specifically gonna be talking about the members pages that gets added when you add the store app to your website. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I am on the website. In the last video, we kind of customized and built our own little store page here. And I think it looks really, really clean. But in order to get to the members pages, all you really need to do is come over to pages and go down to members area and member page. When we land on this page, this is basically what you will see. Um, at the very top, you're gonna have a little members menu with all of the different pages. And then below that, you'll actually have the widget for that specific page. For example, we are on the My Account page. So the widget we're gonna see here is the My Account widget. Now, anytime you have a members area or members page, um, you're always gonna have a My Account widget that comes stock with the members area that allows people to sign up for your website. So it doesn't matter if you add blogging, bookings, events, or anything like that. If you require a members area for any reason, you will always have this My Account. However, the additional pages that gets added are typically based on the app that the user adds. For example, we added Wix stores. So it added the pages, my orders, my addresses, and my wallet. Now, if we go ahead and click on the menu, we can press manage and navigate, and we can easily switch over to different pages. We can even reorder the pages if we want them to be in a different order here in the menu. We can even add more tabs if we wanted to. So we could have a profile tab if we wanted to add that and maybe make somewhat of a like, little social media aspect to the website. But for this e-commerce website, I don't really think it's necessary. And just so we kind of cover it before we head to the other pages, let's go ahead and talk about the design here. If we go ahead and press layouts, we can go ahead and choose if we want the items to overflow. Um, obviously, we don't have that many members pages. I'm sure with the more apps that you may add to your website, the more pages that will be visible here. So you can choose overflow items to wrap or scroll. By default, it is set to scroll. For spacing and alignment, you can of course change this um, to be whatever your desired desire is. I think for this example, where we only have the store, I think having them kind of space out like this actually looks pretty clean. Um, we could also, we could, we could remove this and also just say items fill the entire menu. Basically does the same exact thing, except this one will probably be a little bit more responsive. Whereas spacing between items is a pixel value, which is not a responsive value. We could also have the text aligned to the center, which looks a little bit cleaner when you fill the items to the whole menu. And we could also change the direction of this, which I'm not entirely sure why you would really want to do that especially because under manage and navigation or navigate, you can customize the order in which the pages display anyway. Then item padding, you can adjust that as well. So you have horizontal padding and vertical padding. Now vertical padding, is just gonna make the menu uh, larger or shorter, depending on your needs. I do think larger actually looks pretty clean. So I think I'm gonna leave that like this. Horizontal padding is pretty much useless when this item is on. So if we just go ahead and turn this off and we change the padding here, you can kind of see it's how it's affecting the space. But again, I think it looks a little bit cleaner when they're kind of stretched across the entire menu bar. Then if we open up the design, of course we have the ability to change the design. If we come over to our site theme, we'll notice that we are using the Montserrat font. So if I select this menu right here and we drop down to the menu item and go to text, we'll make sure that we have the correct font selected. I will say for a menu, it might be kind of nice to have a slightly bolder font. So maybe we can do like Montserrat bold. I think that looks pretty clean here. Um, also our accent color is this pink. So I think the pink here looks good as well. But as you can see, we have a lot of customization options. We have the menu container, which is basically this blue bar that you see basically showing us that we have this item selected. That would technically be the container. So if we wanted to add a background fill, we could do that if we wanted to, but I don't think it looks as clean like that. 
If we drop down, we can do the scroll button. Again, we don't really have that many pages, so it's, we can't even really see that. And then we have the menu items, which I've kind of already kind of showed you, but we can also edit them by state as well. So right now we are seeing the regular, but we can also edit the hover. So maybe on hover, we really don't want it to show gray. So we can come over to border and set this to our accent color. And of course, make sure that the opacity is set to 100%. And then the current page will of course have this fill as well. So I think that looks pretty clean. But now let's go ahead and navigate over to the wallet page right here. Now, this is basically how your users can save a form of payment so they can check out quickly on your website. If we go into the settings here, go into design, we can, of course, change a lot of the design aspects here. But of course, we have our Montserrat medium font from our site themes already kind of put in here. But maybe for the page title, we want this to be Montserrat bold, just so it looks a little bit cleaner here. Now, obviously, because this is a brand new website with no users yet, there aren't going to be users to save their cards. However, that doesn't stop us from being allowed to edit the design for the saved cards view. So we can go ahead and switch over to the saved cards. And here is what we will see. And we can edit this design a little bit as well. Like maybe we want this to be a little bit bolder as well. I think that looks pretty clean. But now that we have that design basically done, we can of course manage and navigate over to the my addresses. Once again, this is kind of the view that we see when there are no addresses or in our case, we don't have any users signed up yet. But just the same as the My Wallet page, we can open up the settings, head on over to the design. And once again, for the page title, let's go ahead and switch this over to a bold font. Then we can switch on over to the with addresses and we can ch change the kind of design here as well. Like maybe these dividers, we want them to be pink if we if we wanted to. Um, personally, I still think it looks a little bit cleaner with the black, but I think it looks really, really cool. Um, and another thing I want to note is when you preview the website or when you publish the website, you're not going to see this view because this is only in the editor. However, when we have this selected right here, we can actually go ahead and preview the design here on the website even though these are kind of like fake filler addresses here. It allows us to be able to preview it. So I think that's really, really nice. But last but not least, let's go ahead and press manage and navigate and we'll head on over to the my orders page. For the my orders page, it's kind of the same deal. We go into the settings, we can go to design and this is typically what, and this is what you will see by default. I think I was playing around with it earlier and had the orders one selected, but of course we can customize the design, maybe make this a little bit bolder just to match the rest of these pages. Then we can come over to with orders and we can change the design here a little bit. Um, one thing I will say is I typically like rounded buttons a little bit more um, and you can kind of see it expanded here. So if you have digital products, this is a page that allows them to download those digital products. Or if it's a product that you ship, like a physical product, then you can see, then they can get like a tracking update. So you can see this is shipped. If I were to preview this and open this order that just says confirmed, you will see it's a waiting shipment. So I think it's really cool that they add these views to allow us to edit the designs even when we don't know what they would really look like without actually creating like fake orders or fake addresses or adding a fake card or adding a real card, but <laughs> yeah, you get what I mean. Yeah, so I think these buttons, being able to edit these buttons here is really clean. Um, one thing I will say is I did not see the button styling for the other pages. So I kind of want to check that out real quick. If not, that might be like a feature request that we might need to add. So let's go to addresses. You can see this button is square. We don't really want that. We want the designs to match everything. And if I scroll down, you'll notice that I can't change it. Um, but if I go to without addresses, here we have it. Okay, good to know. And obviously we probably don't, and obviously we might want to add like a, a more bolder font for these buttons. Uh, let's see what we did for the product page real quick. Oh no, okay, we left it a light font. Okay, so we can actually leave that alone uh, then. But of course, if we go back to the page, let's go ahead and select this widget as well. And we'll go into settings. 
design, go to textile and we'll change this to bold. Then let's go to button style, corner radius, we'll up this to 20 and make them rounded, perfect. Input style, uh, let's go ahead and round these up as well. Okay, I think that looks clean. Dividers, we'll leave that. Background and borders, we'll leave that. Uh, textiles, maybe for these subtitles, we'll go ahead and change this to a bold one as well. Perfect. So now accounts and display info will both be bolded. I think this looks great. And we can navigate over to the My Orders page and in the design, oops, and in the design, and go to buttons and we can change this to a light font, like regular, perfect. But that's all you really need to know about the members pages. Basically, it's a way for your users to sign up for your website. And depending on which apps you add to your website, it will add pages to your members area for those apps. And you can also see how easy it was to design them. Now I do think you can create custom ones so you can hide like the members pages potentially in code and design and code your own custom ones. However, for these pages in particular, I think they look pretty good and the customization kind of gives you everything you really need. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you on the next one.